Welcome everyone. I'm Anne-Marie Mahoney and this is our health update. Today my guest is Dr. Adrian Allen, a member of the Belmont Board of Health. We are as always happy and excited to have her with us. Uh, we only have 10 minutes but you know I think we can cover a lot of ground in that time. Dr. Allen, let's start with where I always start, COVID. And hopefully someday we will not be starting with that topic. But for right now, um, what are you seeing in, in the numbers? Does the health department have a, uh, a vaccine clinic for us? What can you share with us? I think as with every fall, the respiratory viruses are increasing, in particular COVID. The good news about it is we're not seeing such a severe wave like we did early in COVID, meaning people aren't getting quite as sick. They have some inborn immunity, either from prior infections or from previous vaccines. And we have Paxlovid, which is a great medication. If you get COVID and you're at risk, call your doctor and get some Paxlovid. There is no downside uh, if you discuss it with your doctor. There's no downside to talking about it. There are some vaccine clinics coming. There was, uh, the next one is October 4th. Um, and then pretty much weekly thereafter, um, October 11th, 18th, November 1st, and November 8th. So there's plenty of time to get your flu and COVID shots. And it is safe to get them together. Um, you want to be sure you're getting your newly formulated vaccine that is for COVID that is matching the current variant as much as possible. Um, there also is a new vaccine for RSV. That's brand new. It's uh, approved for folks 60 and over. And in clinical trials, it looks to reduce lower respiratory, meaning lung infections with RSV uh, significantly. Um, it is new. So for this one, you, we encourage you to talk to your doctor but especially if you have any underlying condition, if you're immunosuppressed or have any underlying lung disease, this might be something you want to talk to your doctor about. So that's what's going on in the COVID flu and now RSV space. All right, excellent, thank you. And that sounds good to have all of those clinics available on a weekly basis. So people can just check out the town website, uh, Facebook, all of those other social media where this information gets out. That's great, thank you. Uh, Let's shift a little bit now. We are reading a lot in the media. You know, we are hearing a lot about mental health. Um, adults for sure, but in particular, highlighting adolescents and children. Um, can you speak to the topic of mental health? This is, and you certainly hear in the news that more and more people are struggling with mental health, with loneliness, with feelings of not being enough. Uh, the, the good news story in it is that we're talking about it. I think for many years, there was such a stigma about talking about how do we take care of our minds? Because uh, it's critical to take care of our minds just as, as it's critical to take care of our bodies. And certainly some studies show that 50% uh, of adults at some point in their life will experience struggles with mental health. Um, and certainly there aren't enough therapists in our area to handle all of that. Um, but there are lots of ways to think about it and to start to soften around this, start to soften around what we're feeling. Um, the first thing I want to say is and talk about the difference between a mental state and a mental disorder. Right? You hear a lot about anxiety, depression, other things. These are normal states in the appropriate situation. So say somebody passes away or dies. It is normal to feel sad. Um, say you have a medical surgery coming up or a big test, it is normal to feel anxious. And so the state has to be appropriate to the context. It's a, hu a normal human reaction. When we start thinking about a disorder, it's when it, there's a mismatch or when folks are under prolonged stress, right? It's not necessarily a disorder, but they're in situations that aren't going to be alleviated in the short term, maybe a situation of domestic violence, living with someone who's having a substance use disorder, homelessness, other things. So there are things in our life that are fixed and maybe not changeable that causes those states to go on for a long time, which has an adverse effect on both our mental health and more and more we're understanding it's our physical health. When we're stressed, you have increased cortisol that can raise blood pressure, risk of heart attack, other issues. 
um, when you're depressed, it also has a chemical effect on other areas of your body. So all is not lost though. There are certainly things to do um, and help out there. So um, number one, talk to your doctor always. There's, there's resources and or therapists and the town does have social workers. Number two, it's, there's building block basics. Are you getting enough sleep, right? If you're only getting five hours, six hours of sleep, this affects your ability to process. Um, are you exercising? Are you getting sunlight in the morning as we're going into these darker hours, right? Morning sunlight, um, even maybe getting a light box can help reset this. What are you eating? Um, food affects our states as well. And then social engagement. Loneliness is more and more um, being understood as such a common thing. Many of us feel lonely and we're afraid to talk about it, but it can hurt our health. So encouraging folks to reach out get engaged and try to destigmatize it because all of us at times feel really alone and disconnected and it's trying to reach out past it. Um, you asked about children. Um, there is a wonderful woman I listen to. She's a psychologist, Lisa DeMore. She has a great podcast that helps parents navigate the ups and downs and the emotional challenges uh, with teenagers and kids as they're growing up. She also has a book called The Emotional Lives of Teenagers. I highly recommend that podcast. But I guess what I'm saying is if you're feeling alone, um, reach out. There are resources both in town and also out there. And that everybody feels that way sometimes. And so to normalize it, to allow it, and to, to kind of open that conversation. The last thing we'll say is to allow the feelings. This is kind of new to me, even as a physician. Right, so often we're like, oh, I shouldn't feel anxious. I shouldn't feel depressed. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't. Sometimes that pushing away from it makes it worse. And so trying with kids, they might say, oh, I don't wanna to go to school or oh, I'm feeling very nervous about this. Oh, don't feel nervous. Oh, don't feel shy or don't feel. It's that don'ting that, that can make that feeling grow. And I'm relearning this now, but allowing things as they are. The feeling is, okay, you feel this way. I can see why you feel this way. And then it's, you, I heard this quote, you can't stop the hurt, but you can stop the alone. So you don't need to fix anything. You don't need to do anything with the feeling. You just need to be there with it, whether it's your own feeling and you're feeling anxious or for a child who's expressing some anxiety or anger or sadness, just being there is enough. And sometimes then things just ease up and do their natural course of ebbs and flows. So I think this is a great conversation and I hope we could keep talking about mental health because it has so many um, it affects so much of our health overall. Thank you. You're right, thank you. That was very comprehensive. Thank you so much. Um, and, and you mentioned right off the top, the idea of grief, the same thing in grief to allow the feelings. That's important for people to recognize sometimes they want to suppress the feelings or they want to say to other people, I'm fine, I'm fine. And of course they're not. And it it is okay to express those feelings. You know, and, and for some folks it's been, the message has been out there, even for, for men and boys, like it's not okay. And then it comes out in the body. So as a doctor, I see I that it's you. coming out as maybe your migraines are acting up or your back pain's acting up. The feeling may not be of the initial cause. Like you may have a migraine disorder or a spinal issue, but the feeling is gonna make all of this amplified, you know, irritable bowel syndrome. It, it will find a way out. So if you're not getting in touch with it, it comes out in the body. It might be high blood pressure, it might be sugar control. It, 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 it's not the initial cause, but it makes all of these things worse. So if you're not sitting with it, it finds its way, it makes you pay attention somehow. It absolutely <laughs> does one way or another. Um, I also would add another resource uh, is our own Belmont Senior Center. It has right. a lot of resources, both in the, the kind of workshops and courses that they offer and the social workers that are available there. So people have many resources at their fingertips they may not be aware of. Yeah, McLean also has some Zoom podcasts that are just open to the public, as does Children's. They had just had one about helping your kids with back to school anxiety. I didn't get to watch it, but if you go onto the Children's Hospital website, they periodically have some mental health Zooms that are great resources. Uh, that's very helpful. Thank you. And, and you're right, this is sort of the tip of the iceberg. So let's plan to revisit this as we go along through the year and see if we can offer people some more tips and some more insights. Wonderful. Um, Dr. Allen, thank you so much, both for the vaccine clinic information and for some uh, wonderful overview of mental health and resources. Um, have a wonderful day, and we'll see you again in a couple of weeks. Thank you so much.
Uh, I'm Anne Marie Mahoney for Belmont Journal. I've been joined by Dr. Uh, Adrian Allen from our Board of Health. Uh, tune in again when we do another conversation. Thank you.